everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations and I'm here with a tutorial craft with me kind of thing. So what I'm doing is I've seen so many people make these really cute books that have places to store ephemera and my brain doesn't work that way and if you're like me I need to be able to see things readily and when I saw this kit from Dots Inspiration Studio, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to make my own um, ephemera manila envelopes and use those to store things in. Uh, so today we're going to look at how I made these so that stuff doesn't fall out. I mean, seriously, if you have an envelope and you pull everything out and everything falls out the side, then you've got a big mess. So for me, I, I thought for a while and came up with a way to do this. Now, I do want to share something with you. I literally spent all day yesterday getting ready to film this. So any of you who see these really awesome videos and they have everything made in 15 minutes, that's because they've spent literally hours making things, figuring out how things are going to work, all that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we'll start with these, uh, these um, folders and then I'm going to make the box that will hold all the folders. So as you can see, these are different ones. I have that one marked for tags. I actually have my own typewriter. I actually have two. I have an electric one and I have a manual typewriter. And these I did on my electric typewriter that I've had for a very long time. It would qualify as an antique now probably. Are pretty close but aren't these printables gorgeous so dots inspiration studio and i know there's lots of other people who have printables where it prints out as a file folder and so what i've done is i printed these out onto just regular vanilla manila card stock and then i this is from the tim holtz pocket where it's the multiple pocket and this i just cut out pieces from leftover scraps that I had and typed on them and cut them out. So that's what that is to make those labels, but you could literally just cut a piece of paper out and or you could write your labels on there if you wanted to. But what I've done is I've gusseted the sides so that things won't fall out. Now, there's a little tiny space at the bottom that if you had something really, really tiny, it would fall out, but I think even paper clips would hold into something like this. So now what I'm gonna do is when I have my box, I can just look straight down into this and say, oh, that's what I want, instead of having to dig through things. And I'm one of those people who I'm very visual, so I have to have to be able to see things. So we're going to get going here. I have another file folder that I printed out and I cut it out. So what I love about the, these printables is literally an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It fills the whole thing. Uh, when I first started printing these, they didn't fill the whole thing, so I had to bump it up to 105%, so it would. So you may have to play around and adjust depending on your printer, the size of the digital file, all of that. So depending on what you're doing. So if you use actually the turquoise one, I recommend you bump it up to 105%. Uh, when I was printing out file folders in the uh, navy one, that's a very similar pattern to this, I didn't need to adjust the size. So those just printed out perfectly. So again, like I said, be careful, take a look at things. You, you may need to adjust things to get them. So this whole piece is from here to here 11 inches and from here to here eight and a half and then when you cut it out it makes this part more like five and more than five and a half like six inches from here to here so we have this and now we're going to make the gussets so what I did this is again I took a, an eight and a half by eleven piece and I literally divided it so there would be no waste. So this is two and three quarters inches wide and you get, I think, four or five of those out of an 11 inch uh, wide piece of paper. So we're gonna start out with this and I'm gonna grab a couple of things. I have my handy dandy stuff all stacked up behind me. So for this, we're gonna turn it sideways and cut this piece in half. This is 
eight and a half inches this way, so we want to make it four and a quarter. And I always use something like this. Um, I'm not very good at marking and cutting straight lines, so I always use something like this. And so again, measure twice, cut once. So this is eight and a half inches wide, so I need it at four and a quarter. Double checking that, I am perfect. So now we have two equal pieces. Yay, that worked. You do not know how many times I cut out pieces wrong and had measured it wrong and had to go back and uh, fix it and, or cut a new piece or whatever. So I literally spent an hour yesterday trying to figure out how to score this so that it would work and we would get these really nice gussets on the side and it would work so <laughs> again behind the scenes stuff you don't see and i figured you didn't want to watch me try to figure this out and i'm glad i didn't record that process because it would have taken forever all right so the first thing you want to do is come in to the seven eighths mark and you're going to just score that I also took a long time to figure out what order to do these scoring in because, and you're going to do it again on the other side. So we've got two score marks here on the 7 eighths mark. And then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do 1 and 3 eighths here, which is the middle, and then a quarter of an inch, and then flip it over and do another quarter of an inch. Now the reason I flipped this over is I found for whatever weird reason it did not work as well to just come in a quarter of an inch to this two and a half inch mark. Although it looks like it would work fine for me personally I needed to do it that way. So we're going to do this one more time for the other side. So we come into the seven eighths mark and we do two there. Now you're going to flip the whole thing over Come into that one and three eighths, which is down the middle. Do your quarter of an inch. I flip it around. If you think you can come in that quarter of an inch the other direction, go for it. And flip it around. So now we've cut and scored those pieces and we need to fold them. And one of the things that I found, um, I was folding these and not getting everything to line up. So just because I scored this doesn't mean that um, it will fold exactly in half. So what I found I needed to do was to make sure, so see that's not quite lined up right, to make sure that everything was lined up right. Now maybe I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this sort of thing. You know, if you're good with close enough, go for it. And then we're going to fold this side and this side up using those score lines and making sure again everything lines up. And what I found was that if I didn't kind of finagle it to line up, it wouldn't just naturally line up. So I did have to throw a lot of these away because <laughs> they, it was not going well. And then the last thing you're going to do is fold down your quarter of an inch, um, which is where you're going to actually attach it to your file folder. I just pointed to a file folder off camera if you're wondering what I was doing. All right, so again, as you're folding it, make sure you're lining everything up because it will not naturally want to just line up. And then we fold these back, but we're not going to really push them down until we make sure they're lined up correctly. And so that's what I'm doing here again, is making sure everything is lined up. All right, so I'm gonna go through and kind of press these down one last time. And then we're ready to glue these together to make our gusseted file folders. And next we'll get on to making the boxes. So I wanted something that was a quick grab and so I'm gonna use the art glitter glue that is a very quick grab. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out and we're going to glue both pieces here and then we'll glue this on top of everything. So hopefully my glue will work. Um, of course not. It's all plugged. So even though I find that even though I've got this pin in here and it should theoretically keep the glue open, 
it doesn't and so this does dry quickly and makes a mess and then he's, I still find myself having to clean everything up quite a bit. All right, let's see if we can get this glue to work now. Seems like it's gonna work now, yay! All right, so we're going to put this down and you want to leave a small part at the bottom so it will wrap around it. So if you put this all the way down at the end, so I'm coming up about an eighth of an inch and just making sure this all lines up with the edge here. It's not quite there. I think I can get that to move just a wee bit. So anyway, we're gonna glue that one down and then we're going to glue this one down. Now make sure your main gussets are coming in this way. You don't want this going out when you fold your uh, folders. So. We want to make sure we get everything lined up right. I think I accidentally glued, tried to glue one in upside down the other day and it was like, oops, that's not going to work. So again, leaving about an eighth of an inch and lining this up right along the edge. And then we're going to go back now and add our glue to these pieces. And this, this is why I use something that was fast glue. You could also, use um, like double-sided stick tape if you wanted. Now, what, you, what I do is I'm going to actually glue both sides first. And this gets a little bit tricky, but I wanna put glue on both sides and definitely get the pin back in that glue because we're gonna use it again. And then I'm just going to fold this down and fold this on top and picking it up, trying to make sure it all lines up. Otherwise you get a crooked folder, which I would not want. And let's press this down, and we're going to again come right along the edges there and fold it again. So there is that, and I did print out a label for this one. Um, at this point, I'm not sure what I've done with it. I had everything out and ready this morning, and then, um, you know, as usual. So if I find that label as we're going through, we'll go back and put a label on it. Like I said, you can either put a label here, you could just write what you want on here, you can leave it blank. There's a whole lot of different options. And if you don't like this blank here, you could even print out more of this on regular paper and put that in there. Oh yeah, I was gonna ink this. So I'm gonna take a minute. And if you do this like I did, just did, this is how I've done all of them. I accidentally glued them together and then went, oh yeah, I wanted to ink these. <laughs> it's just a matter of being really careful um, and holding things apart from each other to actually ink. Um, I am the queen of going back and inking things after I've put it in. I am notorious for putting down things. And what I found is that if I ink things, or, or I wanna go back and ink things, that I can do it a lot of times with a paintbrush. And that will get it into and around those parts that I wanna have inked. Um, so there's a little tip there on inking things after you've made them, which is just, like I said, something I'm notorious for. So anyway, that's ready. So I'm gonna set that aside with all of my other cards. And now I'm going to grab all this stuff to make the box. And like I said, I spent a lot of time yesterday making all of this stuff. So what I did was, this is a nine inch by nine inch square piece of cardboard. And as you can see, it even has the holes in it. This is from the back of uh, papers that came together for a class that I teach and so it was for the workbook and I just covered it with book pages I happened to luck out and the you can see this is warping a little bit that's okay just bent it back um, I, I left out I had book pages that were the size of these so this is nine inches um, let me double check this so the sides are, let's try this again. The sides are nine inches by five and a half inches. And that works perfectly that these are going to fit down inside of there and still have the top stick out. So I have the bottom. I have 
four sides and you can see this didn't cover all the way to the edge that I printed out so on one side I have book pages and on the other side I have uh, I have book pages and on the other side I have this gorgeous printable and I printed the same thing out on all of them I just printed this on regular paper I used Mod Podge not Mod Podge which is how I've said it forever Mod Podge and glued everything down and then I did a light coat of Mod, Mod Podge over the whole thing to seal it and then you can see what I've done is I have this brown cardboard that I again cut into one inch strips and then scored it down the middle and what we're going to do that's what we're going to use to glue everything together with so this is the tops all four tops and you'll see here I decided I wanted to have handles on the side and this is some leather string that my husband gave me so I have that and these are just eyelets that I've run through and then I've uh, put the put it through and tied it so that's the next thing we're going to do you want to have all four of your sides ready to go so that you can then just start gluing everything together and that's kind of my plan so next up I want to get the top on this so we're simply going to glue this down again I'm using the art glitter glue you could use tacky glue you can use Fabri-Tac I just wanted something that was going to glue down really quickly instead of taking forever and having to hold it. And one of the problems with Fabri-Tac is that it does not dry very quickly. Uh, even though I live in Colorado where it's very dry, it does not dry quickly. So I'm going to line this up again. I don't want to line this up on that line because that's going to fold over the top. And so I'm going to just train this up just a little bit so that it'll fold a little bit easier. And now I'm gonna go back and glue this down to the top. So this is what I've already done on all the other sides, is I've glued this piece down. And I like the look of the brown uh, with this. And yes, it does require holding it down for a few seconds to get this to grip, but it will grip much faster than if we used Fabri-Tac. So that's one of the things I really like about the glitter glue. I held out a really long time before I decided to buy it because honestly it's about ounce for ounce the same price as your Fabri-Tac and those things. So I held out but I finally caved and bought some and I'm really glad I did because it does grip really fast. So I made this longer so that it was easier to trim it down so it's the right size to, uh, and I'm not worried about having it be too short. All right, now we need to place our, our um, eyelets, and on the back I've already marked where that's going to go. So what I did, this is nine inches long, I came in three inches from each side, and I made sure it actually lines up pretty closely with what I've done here. So I just took the ruler and made those marks. And so the first thing we need to do is get out our handy dandy crocodile. I have this big one. If you don't have a crocodile, you can use what I call a sharp pokey tool. Something like an ice pick will work great to make your holes. Um, you may not be able to put eyelets in, but a nice sharp po po pokey tool will work. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the 3 16 because this is, this is pretty thick, and so the smaller eyelets won't work. And I'm just going to punch the holes where I have marked them. And I definitely have to get down and look at it from an angle or it won't work. So there's one. And now I'm trying to see where the other one is. Of course, now that I'm on camera. Oh, there it is. I see it. I knew I'd marked it. I just couldn't figure out where it was. And again, I go through it. Now, for this next part, I want to make sure I have everything set. And my crocodile didn't come with one of these. I actually had to go online and get it or whatever it had didn't work or I threw it away, who knows. Anyway, 
This can be found, um, I think it's at wearethenet.com, We Are Memory Keepers. I don't think I actually got this from We Are Memory Keepers. I think somebody scanned this and put this in something. So that this is helpful. If you don't have this, go get this. And what we're going to do is we you push this all the way forward and you make sure that you have your top block and bottom block correct. So we're doing the large 3 16th. So I need the A on the top and the one on the bottom. So I have, and where you can find this is if you pull these out a little bit, you can see that they are marked. And so that is correct. And then this one I need to make sure is the one on the bottom. And I don't have the one on the bottom. So let's go around to the one. Now that says one. And I'm going to put that down. So that is what I need. The one on the bottom. And this is the larger one, so I know that's the correct one. And then I'm going to grab an eyelet. We're going to run these through. And some of these are shiny and some of these are not. And I just want to make sure I don't grab two shiny ones. All right. So I now have my eyelets. We're going to run them through from the front side. So I'm turning this over. And we're going to, I always like to make sure that as I'm pushing it down, I make sure that there's a little part that will go in it and then I get it so it's just touching and then it's a quick and you should hear that sound because that's the sound of the back flowering open. You want it to do that. You don't want it to not open up like that. So when it flowers open like that, if that bothers you or you're worried about it catching on something, you can cover that and then poke another hole through it but you want it to do that. If you don't want that, there are sets where you have a top and a bottom, you can use those. So we're gonna do that again for the other side and the other eyelet. Again, I line it up so that it's in that part, take it till it just starts to resist, then a real quick, and you wanna hear that sound again, so it flowers open like that. So, now that we've done that, we're going to take about nine inches of this, which happens to be the same length as this. We're going to cut that. The first thing I'm going to do is tie a knot in one end. And I know I could feed this through and then tie the knot, but this just worked for me. You could do it your way. As Nick the Booksmith likes to say, I'm not your mom. Whatever works best for you to do this. And again, you don't have to use leather. Um, my husband was very kind and generous to let me have this. He uses this for his craft projects, which involve antlers. So Gaston has nothing on my household. So anyway, you could use lace, you could use ribbon, you could use jute twine. There are so many different things you could use, or you could leave the handle off altogether. I just wanted an easy way to grab this off the shelf so I could have that. Next up, we're going to put, attach our sides. And so I want my handles on the side and I'm gonna go ahead and start lining these up. So what we're going to do is attach the bottom pieces first. And the way I'm gonna do that is I have a bunch of these already cut out and scored down the middle. We're going to go ahead and just start gluing. So this is the kind of boring part, but we need to get all of this glued down so that we can get this put together. So I'm going to start by gluing down each section. And if this is really boring to you to watch me glue, <laughs> maybe now is a good time to run grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of wine if that's what you would rather have instead of listening to me babble uh, or not babble or just be quiet and get this done. So instead of speeding this up, I'm going to continue just showing you what I'm doing. We're going to glue the bottoms down, like I said, first. 
And I'm going to turn this so I have a little bit better light and make sure it's lined up so that, remember, you don't want to go all the way right up to that edge. You want it to be a little bit further down. We're going to glue that down. And then I'm going to trim these off because these are going to flip up, so we don't want them actually down, and this will make it easier to get the four pieces on the other sides as well. So I've decided that I think it will work better to go ahead and get all four of these pieces down, and then we can go from there. So while those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and get these other two pieces glued on. And I love the look of this brown with this um, printable, but if you don't like brown, you can certainly use another color. You can paint your edges if you would rather. Um, there's all kinds of options. You can totally make this look very, very different and still be functional. You can also make it bigger. If you want to use regular sized manila file folders, get bigger pieces of cardboard and use those. These were just pieces I already had left over. And so I wanted to use these first. And always, you know, I think in a world where people are freaking out about not having enough stuff, that this is the time that we crafters already know how to reduce, reuse, and recycle all kinds of things. So I'm bending these up so that I can actually get in and cut them so that everything is cut short. Now don't worry about these raw edges. We're going to cover them. So I'm gonna just get these in and cut these. Oops, glue is sticking to my scissors. We're just gonna cut these four corners. And this is not the time that you want to be uh, cutting your corners like in at an angle because this is going to come straight up. We're not folding these in over top of each other. So I'm making a neat little pile here. Hopefully I will come back for that. All right, so what I want is this to be the front so that when I'm looking down in it, the pay this makes sense to me. You know, I'm probably not gonna really see the bottom of the box, but for me personally, I like to have things where I can read them. I don't like to have writing upside down in my journals or anything like that. So to me, I would rather be able to have it read, and so that has led me to that decision to do it that way. So now we're gonna glue our four sides on and because this is cardboard and not hardboard or chipboard, you could use chipboard if you wanted to. Uh, I find I keep having to rebend it. I probably used a little too much Mod Podge and it's definitely warped. All right, so again, we don't want to take this right up to the edge. You want to leave a little bit of a gap and just make sure everything lines up. So there we go. We're gonna leave just a wee bit of a gap. We've got our two sides with the handles that are opposite of each other. And we're gonna glue this side as well. There we go need to again leave that tiny little gap even though we have scored the cardboard we definitely want to leave a little bit of a gap and then we're going to do the other two sides i'm running out of room here very quickly <laughs> um, let's see i don't know that it matters that these are right side up or upside down because they're all going to be upside down so we're gonna run the glue now for the side pieces. The other thing I thought about doing with this was actually taping it first instead of gluing it to the paper. That certainly would be another option you could do if you wanted to um, 
go ahead and do it that way is that you would just take it and glue it that way and, or use tape instead. I'd really thought about using like masking tape maybe. I don't know. Try it. Try a couple of different things. I mean that's what I did was I experimented a lot yesterday before trying to film this today so that I could uh, actually move a little bit more quickly and I'm hoping this is not like an hour-long video. <laughs> That's my goal. Alright, so we've now lined up the four sides and put them together and we've got those ready. So now this is where these side pieces come in and I'm just going to go ahead and fold this over in half and this will make it a little bit easier because what we're going to do next is these are the corner pieces. This is what's actually going to hold the sides together. And I think I need to pull that one over a little bit better. So this doesn't need to be, I'm not going to go ahead and press this down with a bone folder, but I wanted these to be a little bit longer so that they uh, will cover everything. So this is where we're going to take it and start gluing these sides together. And I know this is way, way, way too long, but again, I wanted it to be long enough to actually uh, hold everything together. Again, this is where double-sided stick tape might work even better instead of doing something like this where you use a lot of your glue and I'm just again running this glue all the way up and down the sides and I think I'm going to try to make this line up across the bottom. So we're going to take this and we're going to pull it up and make sure all of it lines up and then we're going to just take this and wrap it around the two, the two sides holding it together. So this is where having a quick grab glue, unless you want to sit here and really hold this for a long time, is going to make this process a lot quicker and a lot easier. So showing you on the side, I've lined this up on the bottom and then on the inside, I'm going to pick this up, there's a little bit of a gap and that's okay. I've lined everything up the best I can and I'm realizing I want to pull this up and make this line up just a wee bit better at the top so that it's all lined up. So I just saw that and wanted to go back and fix that. I had a couple of seconds that before this all really sets to go back and make sure. So the thing you wanna make sure also, I just saw this, is that the top part lines up. That's really important. So I'm gonna let that dry as we do the other sides. And we're gonna just work our way around Again, take another piece, we're going to fold it over. And I will tell you this much, I originally thought I would put a lid on the box, and for me personally, that was just not going to work. I did not want a lid on my box because I knew I would never open it. Uh, that's the problem I have with the box that I currently have is everything is just shoved in it. There's a lid on it, so I don't even know what's in it. And I, being a visual person, need to be able to just look very quickly at something and see, oh, that's where that is. So again, we're going to just pull this corner up and we're going to make sure it's all lined up. And we're going to push all of this together once we get this part on. So as I'm making sure that this is all pushed together, and I will show you here in a second that I've lined everything up. And I just keep pressing this so that it will stick. We wanna make sure that all the glue sticks and again, I've made sure that the top is lined up pretty well. It's maybe not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And the next piece is going to go on. Again, folding it, training that paper. We want to, to have it already folding so that it sticks and adheres very well. We don't want this whole box to fall apart when we're done.
and we're going to glue this one up and then we'll have one more piece. I'm actually going to trim a little bit of that off so that this all will fit. There we go. That seemed to not cut real well. And pull this side up and then we'll only have one more corner to do and we'll put our uh, file folders together so everything will go in here and we'll, we'll put all this together. All right, holding those corners together again and just pressing the glue in. And like I said, the last thing we're going to do is go back and trim the tops off. So just making sure that's there. And the last corner we have to do is this one. And for, for, for me, I had to really, really carefully think about what order to do things in. Just like making the gussets for the side, there was definitely an order that worked better for me than trying to do it a different way. Uh, so for me, this made the most sense. We glue the sides on and then we come back and glue the sides up. Uh, I'm sure there are some people who would build the outside of the box first and then glue it to the bottom. Again, if that works better for you, try it out and see if that works better for you. And if it does, you do it that way instead. All right, so we're going to slowly but surely push the sides in and get them to line up so that this all is held together. And now I'm gonna go back to these pieces and cut these off so that they are even with the top. And just kind of make sure everything is really good and tight and held together. So one last time around, we're going to do that. And of course, letting the glue dry a little bit longer will also make a big difference. And there is our box. So, um, while I was fumbling about, I did find my die cuts that I wanted to put here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and finish this up. And then we're going to put all of our um, file folders in our file folder holder. <laughs> and I just spilled glue. So what I'm using here as a backdrop is actually a piece of plastic poster board. So it is, um, it wipes up real easily and keeps my surface clean and it's like a buck so I can replace it whenever I want. So now we have our box. You could put a label on the front. I thought about doing that but I know what this is so you could put a label on the front and um, label it ephemera or whatever. You could put your label on your front. You can see here are the side handles. Um, I will probably go back and trim these a little bit better and the sides and all of that. And then the inside looks very nice. So again, the inside, you could use newspaper, you could use tissue paper, you could use more printables, you can use book pages, whatever you have. Um, but the extra layer of paper makes the inside look pretty as well as adds a little bit more structure. So as you can see, these will now all just fit in here and then and I have more than these, so uh, these will all just fit in here and I'll be able to drop things in there and then I'll show you my box. So <laughs> we're gonna go from this, which is my box of junk. So everything is in here and now I'll be able to separate all of this and put this into different things. So this box is full of stuff that people have sent me or I've printed out and had leftovers. So I have things like uh, tuck spots and 
I know I have like altered paper clips down in here and I have little tags and things like that. So now I have places where, um, for example, I'll just grab these two tags and I have a file folder for tags and I just drop them in there, but now when I pull out the file folder to look in there, I can look in there and see them, but they're not going to fall out. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial slash craft with me. I did want to get a little bit better organized and I've got more folders to make because I have different things I want to do. And um, again, like I said, if you want to do things a little bit differently, go for it. But now I have my handles to lift this with and I can just set this on my shelf and grab it whenever I need to grab some ephemera. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you are staying safe. I hope you are finding things to do. I think we crafters live for a time like this. All that hoarding we've been doing, it's time to get it all out and create. So this is going to be a season of creativity for me. I hope it is for you. I hope I've also inspired you to be creative.